Hey everyone, it's that time of year where we start to set goals for the new year and set our new year's resolutions. And while a lot of people are thinking about getting those pounds off, I've been thinking about how do I add pounds to the scale? 100 pounds. See, I wanna go from 150 pounds to 250 pounds this coming year. I wanna be able to grow enough food. Wait, did you think I was talking about something else? No, here on Wild Florida, we're gonna talk about gardening and how we can grow more of our own food. I wanna talk about what's been the best return on investment, what's been the most inspiring, what have been my honorable mentions, what got me the most pounds of food, and what saved me the most money. And then let's talk about what are some strategies to go from that 150 to 250 this coming year. So today on Wild Florida, we're talking about growing our own food. <laughs> Hey everyone, it's Jacqueline, the Wild Floridian. So as you're thinking about your goals and your New Year's resolutions, you gotta think about why. Are you trying to save money? Are you trying to go local? And nothing's more local than your front yard or backyard or side yard or a pot, whatever you got. Um, but once you know your reason why, it gets you motivated and going so that you go and spend all that time in your yard growing plants. And I think it also gives a sense of pride you know, being able to pick your plants and then go inside, make a great dish, um, even just walking through your yard like I do and grabbing mulberries off a tree and eating them. It's really fun to do. So that's what you got to start with. What's your reason why? For me, it really started on a very different path. It didn't start with the intent to grow our own food. It didn't really start with the intent to save money. It actually started with our eldest son. He was developmentally behind on eating and to the point that um, he would choke on food and that would cause him to become terrified of food. So we would set food on his tray as a baby and he would just be hysterical crying. Um, so I was trying to think of ways with the eating therapist, um, how could we get him to interact with food in a way that wasn't scary to him. And the way we started was actually by starting our garden. We started planting seeds, I would call them his baby plants. And then when peppers and tomatoes and green onions were growing, he learned to touch them and wasn't terrified of them. It didn't matter if he ate them or not, it was just that food started to become something that wasn't scary. And that started the, the passion. So um, now we've got a lot more plants, as you can see. Um, we've done a little bit of food foresting, some traditional farming gardening in our yard. And our yard's not very big. We live in a city. So um, that's our reason why. And it's really got me inspired to keep going, to help save the earth by going local in my own yard and, you know, build carbon in our yard and save some money um, and really get some pounds out of this yard. So this year I'm going to go for 250 pounds. But I had to think back. What was the best return on investment? What saved us the most money? What got us the most pounds? What got me motivated to keep going and looking into other plants? Um, and what were some honorable mentions? You know, they weren't the best, but man, they delivered throughout the year. So I'm gonna take you through that right now. Let's go. So let's start with first the best return on investment. Now this is kind of a funny one because it's more about the percentage than it is about total pounds or total money saved. I mean, if you went and grew pounds and pounds and pounds and pounds of this, this would be the best investment. And that is basil. So basil is the powerhouse when it comes financially. If you wanna buy fresh basil at the store, whoo, does that cost a lot of money? Um, now, while we don't use a lot of basil, I mean, it's great. And I call it my win, 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 you know, cause I like that win, win, win plant. So first, you can of course use it in food, make a great pesto, um, if you wanna make a caprese, mwah, so yummy. But the other two things that I find this great for is, is that when it is flowering, the bees love it. All day long, I will see bees hanging out on these flowers. So we always wanna help our pollinators, right? That's what us gardeners wanna do. Let's talk about the third win. The third win for the win, win, win is that this is part of the citronella family. Wait, did you hear me right? The citronella family. I don't know why people are growing citronella. Grow yourself some basil. I mean, you, this is a powerhouse. It is good for you to eat. It tastes good. It's got a nice smell, especially if you're Italian, you love it. And the reality is, is that it's stopping. Whoop, where'd you go? It's stopping the mosquitoes from biting you. So this one, best pound for pound return on your investment is basil. 
Okay, so this next plant, I'm gonna call it my most inspiring plant. This is the plant, I didn't know what it was. I didn't know what to do with it once you even know what it is. It's the one that got me used to doing research on plants and figuring out what to do. And it got me more motivated to go put things in my yard because the reality is, is at first I thought this was an oak. And when I'm gonna tell you what it is, you're gonna think, for any of you guys who are even novice gardeners, are gonna say, how could you confuse that with an oak tree? Well, I didn't know anything about anything when it came to gardening. So the reality is, is that a stick in the ground near another oak tree must be, you know, an oak tree. So most inspiring plants gotta go to this guy right over here, the Kalamondon. My husband and I were, we had vowed when we moved into a house, we were never going to garden. And the reality is, is that we didn't hire a landscaper, so we had to go start figuring out what to go and do. And uh, I saw a stick in the ground and I said, oh no, these acorns are just gone wild and we're gonna go yank this thing out. And then my husband pointed out, he goes, there's a little like ball on here and it kind of looks like an orange and we have an orange tree in the yard so I could see his logic. I was like, all right, well, we'll let it live for the day, carry on. And then months later, well, the oranges didn't get very big. I mean, they were pretty darn small. So I thought, is this a kumquat? Is this a lime, a lemon? I mean, what is this? And it really, it's a calamondin. And I love this now. I've started propagating it in my yard. Um, I always see on the forums, people go, oh, calamondins, get rid of that. No, love me some calamondins. I eat them. I make marmalade from them. We make calamondinade, kind of like lemonade, but with calamondins. So hands down, this has been one of the most inspiring plants for me in this yard. <laughs> I love calamondins. Ooh, tart. So when we want to talk about most pounds, most money saved, hands down, I thought it was gonna be the banana. It wasn't the banana at all. I mean, you guys might be able to guess it just based on one of my other videos, but the reality is, I mean, this one, for the amount of money I had to spend getting this into the ground, the amount of time I had to put towards it, this little weed, this thing, it grew, and it grew 48 pounds worth of food and saved us over $72, and that is going to be the sweet potato. This guy is a powerhouse for saving you money and making pounds of food. So I, of course, we're gonna be using that this next year. Okay, so next let's talk about the honorable mentions. These are the ones, they made a lot of pounds or they saved us some money, but they weren't the winners extraordinaire. So one of them is, let's see, tomatoes. Tomatoes making just about 13 pounds saved us $32. And I love tomatoes because you can do so many varieties in Florida. The big, you know, beefsteak ones that you're gonna get in the store really don't do as well, but man, you can do all these heritage ones. Um, and I'm gonna show you some throughout this year, but I love doing the tomatoes. I love making an angel hair pomodoro. I love putting it in a dish we call antipasta pasta. It's fun. Um, maybe one day I'll make a recipe video on it. <laughs> uh peppers peppers oh my gosh so easy to do you can do but again you can do so many types i do from pepperoncinis it's italian in me and bell peppers we make chili i put it in that antipasta pasta i actually make my own pepperoncinis from it so love peppers for growing in the yard uh, let's see how much did we do this year so uh peppers did about five pounds of those and I didn't write down how much I saved from it but with some money. Um, the next one, lots of pounds but not necessarily tons of savings because bananas actually in the grocery store are pretty cheap. So at 42 pounds, these guys, um, and I only really got two big bunches this year. That saved us about, let's see, so we did 42 pounds and saved $28 for the mint. Now this year, next year, this year, next year, Next year, this is gonna be a huge crop for us because I only really had two plants that produced a bunch. I now have seven, because uh, bananas are easy to propagate, so easy. So that will be a contender for our big strategy. But you know what? This one, I, I went back and forth on the return on investment because by percent, the basil killed. 
But this one, return on investment and money saved, because I use it pretty regularly, and it is so, I mean like, if you're gonna start with a plant, this is the one to start with. Green onions. I made two pounds of green onions this year and saved $32. Two pounds saved us $32. We make this green onion soup, which is so, I mean like, you want some French green onion, ugh, mwah, so good. But it's so easy, it's so easy. And I love this plant and it, you know, where tomatoes can get attacked a lot, where peppers can get attacked by a pest. This one is again, just like the basil, it's a win-win plant. So one, you can use it in recipes. Two, um, I haven't gotten them to flower before because I'm usually cutting them down well before they flower. But this one, so I'm sure it will work for pollinators. But this one, it works not only for making food and doing that whole farm to table, right? You can't get any closer than your own yard. This is one that you could do it in an apartment, a condo, uh, if you are in a dorm room. I mean, this is like the least amount of space, green onions and super easy. What I also love about this plant is if you do have a yard, this is great pest control. Things like raccoons, possums, they don't like the smell of green onions. So putting this as borders to areas where you have things like berries um, and plants that, uh, bananas, they don't wanna go near that. So putting these stinky smelling to, you know, they don't like it. So put them there. So I honestly felt like I went back and forth, green onions as one of the best return on investment plants. Okay, so I've been thinking, how am I gonna go from 150 pounds to 250 pounds? We're not gonna change a couple of things. One, I'm still gonna have a full-time job. I'm still gonna have a commute. I'm planning on keeping my kids and my dogs and my husband. So um, I still got a lot of other stuff to take care of. I gotta get a hundred more pounds of food than I got last year. And I've gotta do something different. I can't just do the same thing. Otherwise I should expect the same kind of results. So I started looking at how many pounds did I get out of the yard and what made the most sense. Now I only did one round of sweet potatoes and we know I got about 48 pounds of that. So when I pulled up the sweet potatoes, I immediately threw back on the ground all the vines and any of the really teeny tiny roots that really hadn't taken off. And I put them right back down and I threw some mulch on top of that. So those are already going. My thought is if I can get two crops versus one, we could call that another 45 pounds. So that only leaves me 55 pounds to go. The next thing is, is that I went from two banana plants, I now propagated it, that's right, I didn't buy any new ones, I propagated it to seven plants. Now, bananas last year gave me about 42 pounds, and if, and that was just from two bunches of bananas, just two, was all that I was able to harvest this last year. And I'm thinking, well, the reality is, two of my banana plants already have bunches on them. So, if those come January, February are ready to go. And then I've got the rest of the year and I'm sure I'm going to get at least two more bunches of bananas. So put that together, assuming they're going to each be about 20 pounds a piece. That's another 40 pounds. So that gets me to 85 pounds. All right. So now I got to get 15 more pounds. Well, another thing that I'm doing differently this year. Um, so I only did tomatoes on the West side of my house this year. I'm putting them in my front yard too. And I think between tomatoes and peppers, I'm getting another 15 pounds because I grew about, let's see, 12 pounds last year in tomatoes. I gave out a few pounds in peppers and I wasn't really working on peppers this last year. And I think with the increased space and because the front yard's southern facing, I'm gonna be able to just knock it out. And I'm getting rid of all the big tomatoes that just bugs ate. I did all small heritage breeds. Um, so those should be able to take off. So I think, so what did I do? I did 45 extra pounds. I'm thinking of sweet potatoes and extra 40 pounds of bananas and then 15 pounds of tomatoes and peppers and bam, there's my 100 extra pounds and that should get me to 250. And that doesn't even include other plants that may or may not produce in this next year. I put in some trees that they're gonna be multi-year grows. But what I've also done, because right, we want that, we've gotta save some money is I've got green onions started in three different pots and in my yard in the spot because I like green onion soup and I want to eat it every month. So I started figuring out like how many pounds and I started figuring it out. If I grow seven and a half pounds versus the two, wow, that's a lot of money I'm going to save this year. Yeah. So those are what I'm doing to get my extra hundred pounds. 
Now for my seasoned gardeners, do you have any other ideas of some good plants that we beginners could go and try that would give us some good return on investment, save us some money, get us some big pounds of food? Um, could you put that in the comments below? And then for those of you beginners, what plant are you thinking of starting? Are you gonna try green onions, which are super easy, or maybe go with a tomato or basil or pepper, or do you wanna try doing one of these guys? Do a banana plant. So put that in the comments below. Yeah, I think we can do it. I think we can do this, right? We can get to 250 pounds, and if you haven't even gotten one pound of food, I bet you can get one pound. I think you can get up to five pounds. You just gotta try, just start today. So I hope you like this. Um, yeah, are you feeling inspired? I know I'm feeling inspired. So if you wanna watch more, we're gonna do, I'm gonna do some videos this year on tomatoes and bananas and green onions and how easy they are to get going. So if you wanna catch that, hit the bell below, it'll notify you and um, hit the subscribe button or you can hit the butterfly that'll appear here at the end of the video uh, to subscribe and then you can watch those as you go along. If you like the video, hit the like button, that always helps the channel. And if you've got ideas or questions, go ahead and put those in the comments below. All right, that's it for today. I hope you found this helpful. I hope you're inspired. I know I am. I'm excited for this coming year and to grow all this food. And that's it for today. So bye.